Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. Today, I am going to give you my top hacks to being the most productive, efficient, stay-at-home mom. Now, I have a bunch of disclaimers before we get started because every situation is different. I'm going to give you my general tips. However, you can apply what actually works for you and your family and let go of the rest. I always say, eat the meat, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply for you in this season, then make a shift, adapt it, or disregard it altogether. In my situation, I am a stay-at-home mom and I'm also a content creator here on YouTube. So my day breakdown looks a lot different than a working mom or a mom who works from home part-time or a business owner or anything else. I also only have one child. So if you have multiple children, if you have a toddler, if you have multiple kids that are various ages, you can actually change this up and have your older kids help with some of these chores and habits and instill this in them. Or if you have a newborn, this might not apply for you at this moment. But starting to implement these little hacks and these little tools that I'm going to share with you will help you maximize the time that you have and actually give you time to do the things that you actually want to do, which is whatever that may be for me. It is hanging out with my daughter. It is interacting with her and teaching her new things. I just want to mention a lot of these are cleaning tips and productivity hacks because I think cleaning takes up the bulk of a lot of what stay-at-home moms and moms just do on a daily basis. All right, guys, let's get into tip number one. Tip number one that I have for you guys is clean while you cook. I absolutely hate being in a messy kitchen. I absolutely hate being done with dinner and seeing the piles and piles of stuff, ingredients, everything just splattered on the countertops. Cleaning while you cook will reduce the anxiety and the overwhelm of seeing a huge mess at the end of your meal or at the end of feeding your kids or anything like that. The second tip that I have for you is empty the dishwasher in the morning so that you can load the dishes throughout the day. Now, I don't typically run my dishwasher every night. I run my dishwasher every other day because we are a family of three and we don't have as many dishes or things of that nature. So if you are a family of 10, you are most likely going to run the dishwasher every day. But I find it much easier when my daughter is eating breakfast in the morning to put the dishes away because she's not down in the same space as the dishwasher. I can put the dishes away without being interrupted and it frees up my dishwasher for the rest of the day so that I can just rinse off the dishes and put it in the dishwasher after every meal. That way the dishes don't pile up in your sink and cause you again to have overwhelm and anxiety looking at your full sink of dishes when you can easily empty the dishwasher in the morning while you're drinking your coffee, while your kids are eating, while the kids are playing, whatever it may be, and you can put it away so you can load it throughout the day. Now, if you don't run it every night like I do, the next day I'll just continue to fill up the dishwasher until at night I have to run it. And then the cycle repeats itself. The third tip that I have for you guys is tidy up the spaces that you're in especially surfaces. So countertops, tabletops, and 
the floors, right? Spot clean where you see it. The goal is to tidy up and make it look nice and presentable as much as you can. You have to learn how to live with a certain amount of mess, especially when you have kids, but tidying up is the key. It's not about cleaning to perfection because as soon as you do that, you know, the kids drop something on the floor or, you know, they start coloring everywhere, whatever it may be, these things can occur. So you have to determine what threshold you are willing to live with, right? Especially you and your spouse. You need to understand what is a no-go and what is okay. So I highly suggest you tidying up when you see these things and spot clean counters and floors when you see it. Don't let the mess just sit there because I'm telling you at the end of the night, you're going to feel completely overwhelmed and in shock that your house is like that. And if you're anything like me, you can't go to sleep with a messy house. The fourth tip that I have for you guys is establish a laundry schedule. Now in my house, we don't do laundry every day. I do laundry on specific days and I know specifically what I am attacking that day. For me, it makes it much easier for me to tackle a huge load of laundry and get it all done and put away because I'm already in the mindset of doing laundry all day. So as soon as that laundry is done, I am putting it in the room that it lives in and I'm starting to tackle it, folding it and putting it away. If you are a bigger household and have a lot of kids, you might have to do laundry every day. If you have kids that are old enough to do their laundry. Tell them today is Monday. Today is your day to do laundry. And if it's Jimmy's time to do his laundry on Thursday, then make sure Jimmy is doing his laundry. Understand what laundry you are doing that day. It reduces that mental load and that mental energy to figure out, okay, what do I have to do today? What laundry do I have to get done today? What do I have to tackle? No, everything is scheduled out. You know that boom, 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 today is this this type of laundry, tomorrow is that type of laundry, and the next day is this type of laundry. Put it on a piece of paper, whether you write it out or have a Google Doc about it, and paste it in your laundry room or on the refrigerator for you to see what laundry is being done today. Tip number five goes back to a schedule, right? Establish a schedule that works for you. For me, I wrote down a master list of every space in my home, what I do for reset days and what I do on daily days. My daily tasks include cleaning the kitchen to completion and picking up and tidying up the living room to completion every night. Now, this doesn't mean I'm gonna vacuum the floors every day. That doesn't mean that I'm going to completely, you know, wipe down all the cabinets. I'm just making sure that the living room and the kitchen are clean to completion and how I see completion, right? You're going to have to determine what completion looks for you, but I have it laid out for me where I know that today is bathroom cleaning day and tomorrow is bedroom cleaning day. And it's not necessarily cleaning to perfection or to reset, right? Because my reset days and my daily tasks, what I label it daily tasks, are not the same. My reset days are deep cleans and my regular days are just picking up and wiping off counters and cleaning mirrors and things like that and spot cleaning the floors if needed. And let's be completely honest, right? With kids, you might not get everything done on your list. You might not finish 
what you started. You have to figure out what's that threshold for you. My sixth or seventh tip that I'm on is declutter whenever you can and get rid of that excess decor. I keep a very minimal household and I'm very particular on the items that I'm purchasing and bringing into my house. And if it doesn't serve me, if I haven't picked it up or I'm constantly cleaning around it or having to place it somewhere else so that my daughter doesn't pick it up, I just get rid of it. I just get rid of it because in this season of my life, I can't have nice things, okay? I have a toddler, she wants to destroy everything. And in my particular case, all it does for me is it makes me anxious and it makes me on edge knowing that she is touching something that she shouldn't be touching. I've made a lot of my spaces in this house yes spaces for my daughter. And if you don't know what a yes space is, it is essentially just a space that is safe enough for kids to play unsupervised. Now, I'm not saying that I'm like leaving my daughter downstairs just unsupervised without me being there, but I don't have to be on edge knowing that she's going to put something dangerous in her mouth and possibly choke on something. I always try to keep my space minimal and decluttered because it reduces the amount of things I actually have to clean, pick up, and put away. And it's also just crap that we accumulate. My coffee table's empty. I put her water cup on it. I put her snacks on it. And I let her play and have fun. Now, you have to determine what knickknacks and things clutter your mind and your household. But if you are constantly having to pick something up after your kids are putting it in their mouths or taking it up or throwing it off, maybe it's time to get rid of it. And that also goes for kitchen utensils that I'm not using. That also goes for things that have just collected dust on my bookshelves. I just either get rid of it or donate it to people that need those things, right? I'm not keeping it in my house for the sake of decor and for the sake of just looking good on my counters or looking good on my bookshelf. I don't wanna deal with it. I don't wanna clean it. And so I just keep a very minimal space. Okay, we're almost done with this list, but if you guys are finding value thus far, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like button because it really helps me out and it lets me know that you guys like this type of content. Now, the next tip that I have for you is wake up before your kids, even if it's five to 10 minutes, okay? Because sometimes you need it. I am such a night owl and this is such a hard tip for me, but every time I wake up before my daughter, I feel like I can take on the day and I can actually tackle it with a vengeance because I have gotten a little bit of my me time. Be intentional with the time that you have because as soon as the kids wake up, it's go time, it's mom time, it's their time, right? In the mornings, especially when you wake up before your kids, that is you time. Whether it be working out or getting dressed or doing your skincare or drinking your coffee or journaling or doing a Bible study, whatever it is that fills your cup in the morning before you have to be in mom mode, just take care of yourself and take a little bit of that time. The next tip that I have for you is stay flexible. I know I've been talking about routines. I know I've been talking about schedules, but especially if you have little kids or babies or a newborn, you have to learn how to be flexible. You have to learn how to adapt and change to the day. Like I mentioned, you're not always going to get every single task done. Perfection is not the goal. The goal 
is to make time for the things that you actually want to do. And for me, it's spending time with my daughter throughout the day. The rest of the stuff are things that I have to do around the house, my chores. And so I schedule things around her schedule, but I gotta be flexible, right? And if you have more kids, you definitely have to be flexible because you are dealing with multiple personalities at that point. The next tip that I have for you is when in doubt, leave the house. I know this sounds super counterintuitive, but for many, many moms, especially if you're a stay-at-home mom with multiple kids, it is sometimes super difficult to leave the house, not only because you have so much stuff to do in the house, but also because corralling the kids and putting them in the car or putting them in the stroller is just a hassle. But every time I leave the house for a walk or taking my daughter to the playground or taking her to grandma's house or even just playing in the backyard outside or even on the front patio or on the driveway, but just being outside and getting that fresh air and that sunlight will help rejuvenate you. It will help reinvigorate you to tackle the next task that you have when you get home, right? And it will also get your kids out of the house and tire them out if they have to take a nap or it will just break up their day a little bit and it breaks up your day. I always try to take at least one to two walks a day with my daughter. I know it's gonna be a little bit more difficult when I have more kids, but you know, trying to get out of the house, even if it's just playing outside in your backyard or your front yard, it helps a lot and it helps you reduce your anxiety, like I've been saying throughout this entire video, and it will just break up your day even more, especially if you find yourself cooped up in the house all day long. That is all of my tips that I have for today. If you guys liked it, if you guys do some of these things, let me know what you think down in the comments. I am so eager to hear about your systems in your house. I will also link some of these printables that I have. If you guys want to check it out and support me and support the channel, you can download these digital prints and print it out. I have some laminated and it just makes my life easier, like grocery lists and to-do lists and things like that. So if you guys want to support me in downloading these and setting it up for your own households, that would be awesome. And if you guys want more of these videos, please let me know down in the comments below. Again, it helps me out. It makes me understand what you guys want to see more. And if you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and I'll see you in my next one.